what is up everybody welcome back to the channel if you're new here thanks for tuning in it is too early to be getting up on a sunday morning too early and too cold uh, but like i told you guys in last week's video i'm going to be doing an injector install today uh, we got one day to do it um, should have plenty of time but wanted to get up at a reasonable hour to make sure we got the full day to work on it i don't want to do a whole lot of talking before the video gets rolling um, but kind of going to go through the entire process of if you're looking to install injectors onto a 7.3 liter power stroke I'm going to be doing it on an OBS power stroke uh, but it is pretty darn similar to a Super Duty if you own one of those um, overall it's not all that complicated of a process um, just kind of some things here and there that you should keep track of and keep in mind when you're doing it yourself so before I start up the truck and head over there give you guys a little bit of a background on the truck so you kind of know I know what we're looking at 94, 94 and a half, 73 liter power stroke, the very first year of power stroke trucks. Uh, my buddy's been having some issues starting the truck up when it's cold in the morning. Uh, we've already gone through the entire glow plug system. Um, all the glow plugs have been replaced. The relay is working good. Um, we tested all the wiring harnesses. They're all good to go. Um, so we are pretty sure that it is the injectors are just worn out. Um, the truck has over 200,000 miles on it at this point and we're pretty sure that the the we are uh, pretty sure the the in we are pretty sure they're the original injectors. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're fairly worn out at this point. Um, either way, he's going to be upgrading the injectors, and so we're just going through that process now. Um, this is actually a little earlier than he was planning doing the injectors, um, and so we're actually throwing hybrid injectors into a stock truck. Now, at the end of the video, I'll probably go into a little more detail on uh, how this is all going to work out, throwing such large injectors into a stock truck, um, kind of one of the perks of hybrid injectors. But I don't want to bore you guys with all the information at the beginning. I'll go through some of that stuff at the end, why we chose the injectors we did, all the other details like that. We're also going to be installing a Hydra chip with custom tunes from 1023. Again, go into more details with that at the end when we're actually going through that. Uh, for now, I'm going to gather some tools that I think we're going to be needing or might be helpful. And maybe I'll give you guys a little bit of a cold start of the old girl. Um, let's go. Alright guys, so under the hood of the truck, if you have an OBS, you recognize this site. If you have a Super Duty, this is what an OBS looks like. Basically the same thing, uh, minus the intercooler piping, and the fuel bowl setup is a little bit different. So essentially what we're going to get started with is getting down to the actual injectors, which is pretty simple on the OBSs, simpler than the Super Duties. Essentially we just want to get the valve covers off so you can see the passenger side one here. And the driver side one obviously over there. So on a Super Duty, you have to actually pull the intercooler piping off of it. Um, you can leave the stuff in the middle, but pull the intercooler piping off, pull the air intake off. Um, same thing with the OBS. So we're going to get down to the valve covers, and then there's just uh, some simple, I think they're 8 mil or, yeah, probably 8 mil bolts. I don't know how many of them, but they go around the valve covers. Some of them are a little tricky to get to, like those ones back there, and the one in the back corner. Um, if you have some stubby ratcheting sockets, that helps a lot, as well as some uh, swivel head sockets. So, not a whole lot for you guys to actually see. Um, I'll catch back up with you guys once we have the valve covers off.
Alright guys, here we go. Got the valve covers off, as you can see. I already got the wiring harness and everything stripped out of that, so I wanted to show you on this side what the wiring harness looks like. On the OBS's you have a main plug here and another one back there. Um, as well as on this valve cover you're going to have the CCV housing or the doghouse. That's easy to take off, it's just two uh, screws on top of it and that's how you get to this bolt right there on the valve cover. Otherwise you won't be able to get to it or you won't be able to get it all the way out. Um, so you'll have to take that off but it's easy. It's just got two little o-rings on it. So what you're looking at under here is each one of these is one of your injectors. All the, of course you got four all the way back. To unplug it you got these metal clips right here that just pop up and off of it. Super simple and then you just pull the plug down out the back of it. Um, so when we're taking these off, I'll show you guys as we're doing one of them, but essentially you have a little Allen bolt right here, and that's for the oil deflector. You're going to want to take all the oil deflectors off, and then you have a bolt down here on the bottom right there that you're going to take that bolt all the way off, and that'll allow you to slide up that collar around the injector, slide it up, and then we'll be prying the injectors out after that. Um, obviously, uh, oh, one last thing is, not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but down just to the right of every single injector plug is your plug for your glow plug. Uh, they're usually white wires that go down to the glow plugs. Uh, just pull straight up on that and you'll pop it off. Um, I'll show you guys that probably outside the truck so you can kind of get a look at the wiring harness. But overall, that's basically all you have to do is one bolt there, one bolt on the bottom, slide the collar up, which I'll show you on the injectors, um, and then you just pop it right on out. All right, here you go. Here's the other wiring harness. So you got your plug for the injector right there, and then you have your glow plug wire right there that just is a little slip-on cap that goes on top of the glow plug. Um, so just pull that straight up and out and you're good to go. All right, so a couple more things I just thought of. Uh, one of the differences is on the Super Duty truck versus the OBS. OBS, your main engine plug is right here. Uh, Super Duty will actually go over your valve cover on the driver's side. It's easy to take off. It's just got a bolt in the middle of it that you unscrew. Uh, the bolt will not come all the way out. So you're just gonna keep screwing it forever if you try to take it all the way out. Uh, the bolt just holds it in place um, and then you can unclip it and pull it out. Um, as far as actually removing the injectors go, you have a fuel and oil rail inside the uh, head of your engine on both sides. And as soon as you pull an uh, injector out, all of the oil and fuel are going to drain out of that injector cup into the cylinder. Uh, so my recommendation is to actually on both sides remove the rear injector first. So that way all the fuel and oil and everything go all to go down into one cylinder. Then you only have to worry about clearing out one cylinder as opposed to working your way back. You get some in here, get some in there, get some in there, get some in there. Uh, just bring it all into one cylinder. And I'll show you guys how to clear out the oil. It's super easy. Um, but for now, we're going to work on getting the injectors out. So now that we got that Allen key or Allen bolt out, should be able to just pop this off. Just like that. That's where the oil comes through. Just pops right on off. Super simple. You're gonna to wanna to do that on all of the injectors. Take those off first. Those parts are delicate. The reason you mainly wanna take them off is so you don't risk breaking them when you're pulling the injectors out. Um, and it's so easy to take them out, you might as well just do it. So we're gonna go through, get all those done. Then I will show you how to pop out the injector. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to show you guys how to every single injector. I'll show you guys how to do each step on one of them. And that will show you how to do it on all the others. Some of them are a little bit more of a pain than others. But overall, you'll know how to do it. It's not all that complicated. So next step, now that we got that done, will be to pull out this bolt right down here. Um, it's got a pretty good amount of long, fine threads on it. So it takes a little bit to get it out. Uh, but it's not all that bad. We'll take that out and then we'll be able to slide the collar up and pop the injector out. We got the back injector broken free. 
uh, pry bar underneath the uh, collar makes a big difference. When you actually pull them out, uh, you're going to want some paper towels or something because they will be dripping with oil, um, as you'll be able to see, or should be able to see. Now you can see all the oil that fires the injectors, all of it is gonna be draining into that back cylinder there. So you guys get a better view once we do one of these upfront ones. Um, so you guys can just watch until we get to one of those. Another trick, uh, when you're actually breaking them all free, break them all free, don't pull that one yet. Yeah, I want them to see it. But break them all free and then just let them sit in the actual injector cut themselves and let it all kind of drain down into the cylinders. Uh, just kind of helps to prevent from making a mess. So let's see if we can get you guys a good angle of this. So this is what it looks like when the collar slides up. Now you can see that it clears that upper bolt. You come in with a pry bar underneath that collar and rest it on the, he uh, the edge of your head basically. And then you're gonna use it to pry the injector out just like that. It's all nice and loose. And you move on to the next one. So those are all good. All these ones are free. We'll let them just kind of drip and drain into the cylinders while we move on to the other side and get those done. Then we'll pull them all out and make sure everything looks good before putting it back together. There we go. One minute later, all the passenger side injectors are free. Let them drain them down a little bit and then we'll pull them out. So just kind of moving forward for you guys so you know. So what we're gonna be doing is all the, well mainly the rear cylinder, but all the cylinders are gonna have a mixture of oil and fuel inside. Oh, you guys are out of focus. All the Cylinders are going to have a mixture of fuel and oil inside of them draining out of the rails and out of the injectors into the cylinders. And if you just slap it all back together and try to start it, you have a very good chance of hydrolocking your engine and bending or breaking some of your rods, which is not a good idea. Um, so what we're actually going to be doing, the best and easiest way to clear out all the cylinders is to pull the glow plugs out of all their holes. Uh, put the valve covers back on and then just turn the engine over by hand um, and then the as the cylinder or the as the Pistons move up. They'll actually push all the oil or just about all the oil and fuel out of your cylinders uh, you are going to want to Put your valve covers back on at least temporarily. You don't have to bolt them all back down But put them on temporarily. Otherwise you will make a large mess inside your engine bay um, so we're going to pull these out Pull the glow plugs out. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the glow plugs are just located right down, like I said earlier, to the right of the injector. That little shiny silver thing at the tip of my finger. Um, with the injectors out, it's super easy to pull them out. Um, so you pull them out, leave them out, and we'll put the new injectors in, um, and then we'll turn over the engine by hand, which I'll show you, and that'll clear out the cylinders. Sorry if that was out of focus. I kept drifting you guys <laughs> off. Um, but that's the gist of it. Super simple. All right, you guys got the injectors out. Took a little bit of finagling to get it past the uh, heater core box or whatever it is in the back left corner of the engine bay. Uh, but got it out. Um, quick note for you guys. First of all, here you can see the collar that we were trying to show you before. Um, just slides up and down so you that actually holds it into place and then one very very important thing to look at on every single injector when you pull out 
is to make sure it has that copper o-ring you do not want to leave any of those copper o-rings inside the cylinder um, you won't get a good seal you'll have it just won't be good make sure every single injector you take out has those copper o-rings um, if you're ever hearing somebody saying that you need to replace your injector o-rings that's what these things are they seal the different compartments between the fuel and oil um, if you're mixing fuel and oil um, there's a decent chance it's your injector o-rings uh, but here is or here are one of the brand new full force i guess it's not brand new remanufactured full force what'd you go 23880 uh, 205 over 80 injectors hybrid injectors um, i can go into more details on these at the end of the video so we don't do all the talking now but we're going to go through check all the uh injector cups make sure all they all they all look good seem to be in good condition make sure all the old injectors have the o-rings and then what we're going to be doing is actually putting the new injectors in leave the glow plugs out and then we will put the valve covers back on loosely crank over the engine to clear out the cylinders i'll show you guys that and you guys will be able to hear it and then we'll be ready to put the glow plugs in and put everything right back together so we're going to get worked on that update you guys in a little bit here we go ready to put the injectors in as you're putting them in it doesn't hurt to uh, put a little extra oil on all the oil rings just to make sure they slide in nice and easy um, it will take a decent amount of pressure to get them in um, but you guys will kind of be able to tell once it pops in if you can you try to shove it in with your palm uh, you got to be a little careful on the back solenoids but most likely we'll end up breaking a little bit of a, a mallet out and tapping them in. Be careful when you're tapping these in. The back parts of it are made of thick plastic, but plastic still, um, I believe, and so you don't want to be wailing on them. Um, when you are tapping them in, you will hear a difference in the noise it makes once it actually seats. So now that we got all the injectors pressed into place, they're all sitting about as deep as they should. Uh, we're gonna put in the retaining bolt down on the bottom to lock the collars in. And that should also help uh, sink them in the rest of the way if they are sitting up just ever so slightly. Uh, I believe, I'll check on this, but I believe the torque spec is 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds. Um, but we'll go through and torque those down. Everything else is kind of Got a little leeway on it, but I would recommend actually torquing these down to spec just to make sure it doesn't hurt to be careful. All right, we got all the retaining bolts in. So now we're going to go through and put on all the oil deflectors. Uh, those are torqued down to nine foot pounds or 108 inch pounds. Um, pretty straightforward. We'll go through and torque that and then we gotta do this side. All right, quick tip for you guys. Getting ready to put the glow plugs back in. Um, get yourself, I think it's 3 8 tubing, and you can slip it up over the top of the glow plug because you're not going to be able to get a socket on the glow plug and around the injector until the glow plug is almost all the way screwed in. So get yourself a little piece of 3 8 tubing. I think it's 3 8 tubing. Double check that online. Um, and use this to actually thread the glow plug in almost all the way. Then you can pull the tube off and finish it off with an actual ratchet. Um, just a quick tip, you, you guys will find out exactly what I'm talking about if you try to do this with just a long, uh, a deep socket and a ratchet. So I figured that would save you guys some time. I figure this is something that a lot of you guys probably haven't actually seen before of how a glow plug actually works. So for those of you guys that don't know, the outside of the glow plug is what actually grounds it to the block. And then that little probe on the end that you hook the wires up to is what uh, the power runs through. So if we were to ground it like we are now and then run the power through it like he'll do, you'll start to see heating up, burning off the oil. And just like that, that's what happens inside your cylinders when you're turning on your glow plugs. So that was probably 15 seconds right there. Will your wait to start light is right about let that. 
gets it all nice and hot and that's what triggers your combustion inside your engine thought some of you guys might enjoy that because most of you guys probably haven't actually seen how a glow plug works so now we're gonna let this cool off and then throw it in the engine <laughs> we got all the injectors buttoned back up glow plugs are in wiring harness is in all that is good to go over there for the test run so now what we need to do is taking out the pcm we got the hydra that we're going to be installing with the tent with the custom tuning from 1023 diesel. Um, not a whole lot to say about that. There's a number of good videos on how to take out your PCM and install the chip. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that, but we're gonna take the chip out or PCM out, put the chip in, download the tunes, and then it is time to do the first fire on the truck. We're actually gonna be firing it without the valve covers on. Uh, it's not gonna make much of a mess, all the oil, goes through the oil uh, spouts back down towards the engine so it doesn't really make a mess but what it does allow you to do is make sure each individual injector is actually firing and spitting oil uh, if one of your injectors is not spitting oil it's not firing and you got to figure out why so that's just kind of a good quick way to be able to test it and see what things look like make sure everything's good to go so i'll update you guys in a little bit i don't know when but in a little bit all right guys, got everything in. The tunes are uploaded, the chip is in, injectors are in, glow plugs are in, wiring harness is hooked up. Now we get to try to start it up. It's probably gonna take, I'm guessing at least three cycles of cranking. Uh, we'll find out. So I'm gonna set you guys up so you guys can watch it. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing fired up without killing the batteries. Well, there you guys go. She fired up on the seventh attempt of starting her. Um, I will say between all those uh, starting attempts, we did let the, the uh, starter cool down a little bit. We weren't just cranking it full time that entire time. Give your starter time to cool down, otherwise you're gonna burn it out. And you'll see that we actually have both batteries hooked up to battery chargers, because you're gonna eat through some power. Um, you'll most likely kill your batteries if they're not hooked up. What you're seeing right now is basically we're just going through and making sure all the injectors are spitting oil like they should be all of them were so that's good but you just want to take a look at everything and make sure it's all functioning and looking the way it should um, so that's what you see us doing here now everything looked good though all right guys there we go engine started up took a little more cranking than my guess uh, but it honestly wasn't all that bad it took about 15 minutes total to get it all started up Still running a little rough because there's a bunch of air in the lines, but 
running good enough now that I feel comfortable buttoning it all up. We went through and checked every single one of the oil deflectors going along. Um, each one of them is spitting oil, so all the injectors are firing, which is a good sign. So I'm comfortable buttoning it all up. We're going to go through that, get it all buttoned up, and then probably take it for a drive and see how it does. Uh, you guys probably don't really need to see much of that because it's just the opposite of what you just did. So we're going to get that done, and I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. All right, guys, we are wrapping up the truck. My last bit of advice to any of you guys swapping injectors is to do an oil change afterwards. Not 100% necessary, but when you do clear out your cylinders, you're mixing some fuel with your oil. My bet is it's just best to clean it out, get everything fresh. You just put a couple thousand of dollars into your truck with injectors, um, if you're, depending on what injectors you're putting in. Either way, you're putting over a thousand bucks into your truck. Doesn't hurt to do a simple oil change. Make sure they're getting nice clean oil. With that being said, I think that's just about it for the night. We're probably gonna fire it up again. Maybe go for a test drive. If I don't take you guys along with this test drive, I will take you out on another one. As you can see, it's dark out now, so there's not a whole lot you guys are out actually gonna be able to see anyways. Um, so at some point, I'll take you guys out in this truck again. Um, but for that, it might be it for now. Oh. It will take around 50 miles of driving to get all the air out of your system. So don't be concerned if you finish the swap, you drive home or whatever, it's 10 or 20 miles and the next morning you go to start it up and it's hard starting. Uh, give it a good solid 50 miles of real driving uh, and that should get all the air out of your system. As far as cranking goes, hook up the batteries get them ready to go uh, you're going to do a lot of cranking to start these things up um, but yeah overall pretty simple swap I'll probably go over all the more details of this swap a little bit later 